Got a super low height 120 millimeter dual tower cooler. It's only 135 millimeters tall. It's really something unique and it comes in at only $35. Kind of peerless. Welcome to Machines More. All right, today we're finally gonna do the full review of the Thermorai Peerless Assassin 120 Mini. I've used this in a few builds and I've tested it thoroughly, namely the end case M1 and M2, and it's ideal for either because at only 135 millimeters tall, it fits into both cases. So it's well suited for that form factor. The NKS M2 from my testing can in fact fit a Noctua D12L, which is 145 millimeters tall, but that's within an official territory. So this is the one in the official uh, spec. Of course, I'll show you how that compares against the D12L today and why I think this is a very impressive cooler and why for the broader audience, it's actually going to be the more sensible choice. Real quick, while Thermorite has provided review samples in the past, this one was not provided by them. I'm also not paid by them for this review. And as with all reviews, on this channel, you can expect independent and well-researched feedback. So first off, the heatsink. The one I have here, this is the black one, and there's also a white version. Features two tower sections, and these are connected through the base plate via six, six millimeter heat pipes. And that's one additional heat pipe compared to the Noctua D12L. These heat pipe tips are not visible, unlike with the D12L, and they are beneath a flat shroud here, flat cover here. It's quite elegant. In the middle, you have a single 120 millimeter fan. It's a TL D12B from Thermorite. And this one goes up to 1500 RPM plus or minus 10% and features a fluid dynamic bearing. So the heatsink is a similar design to the older Thermorite Silver Soul 135, which also is 135 millimeters tall, but the tower sections are a little bit wider. Mounting the solutions for AM4 and AM5 are provided. A quick note, the bars do say AM4, but you will use the same ones for AM5. That's the same cooler mount. Also, Intel LGA 11.5X, 1200, 1700, and also 2011 and 2066. So you've got a, quite a wide array covered here. So on AM4 and AM5 wide tested, it's pretty simple install. Just place the mounting bars over the spacers and you thread the screws into the stock back plate. The cooler then goes on over that and it's a two point mounting solution. On most mini ITX boards where you might look to deploy this, the tower doesn't quite overlap your RAM. There's quite a bit of height clearance and you could safely fit 44 millimeter tall RAM before you would even get to the bottom of the heat fins here. But uh, with most boards, the RAM will just sit right up against the outer edge, so there shouldn't be any in interference. The fan secures with clips. Single fan configuration will fit in the middle and you can install it in either airflow direction if you wish, and you can attach it to either tower. And it'll just clip on. I ran this one in the NK M2 with the 7800X 3D and in the M1 with the 9700X. Performed quite well in both scenarios. Uh, for the comparison testing, I did use the Ryzen 7 5800X in the NR200 test system. I, I do think this cooler, like the D12L, is suitable for CPUs at around 120 watts of sustained power draw. The 5800X does run close to that here, 4.6 gigahertz at 1.25 volts. At the first noise normalized interval, you'll see that it slots in close to about two and a half degrees better than the 135 millimeter SS135 and does trail the Noctua D12L by approximately that same amount. So it's basically in between those two coolers. Very good performance here. And at the higher noise level, which matches the max RPM on the D12L, the PA120 Mini is at 1460 RPM. It's a two decibel increment versus the previous level. We see a small increment here, still roughly the same gap to the Noctua D12L, but at this level, the SS135 does perform a lot better than it did previously. The PA120 Mini's fan can run a little bit faster than this for an additional 0.7 dBA penalty at its max RPM. I was getting about 1550 RPM, still a little bit of headroom left here. Versus the D12L, you can sum it up this way. So for equal performance, it operates at a roughly 2.7 dBA penalty or at equal noise levels, about a two and a half degree deficit. For max fan speeds versus max fan speeds where noise is not factored in about a 1.5 degree deficit. So that's where the numbers are. One thing I did do was I tried out the D12L's Noctua fan on the PA120 mini heatsink. 
So at the first noise normalized level, the two coolers perform just about the same, but that may be close to the limitations from this heatsink design as upping the fan speeds to the max level, 2000 RPM did not yield too much of an improvement. And unless you want to find a suitable fan clip, I would advise against doing this sort of fan switch because although there's a small but measurable performance difference, it does cost $30 and the NF A12x25R, it's kind of meant to be mounted this way for the lowest height position. Okay, but what you'll notice is that the hole pattern on this fan is not the same as the stock fan on the PO120 Mini. So when you use the clips in this position, they actually end up having to stretch a lot more uh, to mount to the heatsink. And the stock clips, they don't account for that extra space. I also tested it rotated around, but at this point, the height pushes beyond the 135 millimeters, right? So it's kind of defeats the raison d'etre for the lower form factor of this cooler. So I think leaving it at stock is kind of the way to go with this one. One thing I wish is for the stock fan to have a higher RPM level, the SS135. Previously, I tested in at the 1950 RPM max. So even if you didn't need it that fast, if this fan could spin a little faster, it'd give you a little bit more headroom for some hotter chips. As it is, as mentioned, the 120 to 125 watt level would be the comfortable upper bound uh, for me. Certainly CPUs like the 7800X 3D, the non-X 7700, 9700X, those would be in the sweet spot where the cooler fan will run at a barely audible level. If you are working with the 9700X, you'll definitely be able to up the power limits a bit too and get that extra performance boost with this cooler as well. So it does have uh, that uh, capability. Uh, a few sound samples for your reference. They are tested in the NR200. So not too much of anything concerning. I did notice a little bit more of a higher frequency noise toward the highest end of the fan curve. So if you are sensitive to that, you definitely want to pair this with uh, more of the 7800X 3D or 9700X level of power draw on that type of CPU. So overall, very good cooler. The use case for this one, I think height limited systems that are using those types of CPUs where you want a good dual tower. NKSM2, M1, sub Meshroom D uh, users, this is perfect. Um, even in a case where you could fit a D12L, such as C4 SFX, for the price, I think it's definitely worth considering since it's only $35 compared to the D12L, which starts at $90. The fairer comparison would be the Chromax version there, which is $100, because that's black and this is a colored finish, and that $100 is just a lot more than this one. And you also have to consider this is lower than the D12L. So the D12L cannot, simply cannot fit in cases like the NKSM1. So Thermorite has a reputation for getting an incredible performance per dollar metric. And I think that certainly continues on here with the Peerless Assassin 120 Mini. So that'll do it for this one. Please give a like, make sure you are subscribed. Check out the links down below for this cooler. Big thanks for watching today.